Breaking news, though, this afternoon, Arizona State University police say they have an arrest related to the sexual assault on ASU's Tempe campus earlier this month. Officers said a man grabbed a woman from behind and held a knife to her throat near the Packard parking garage on Sunday the 17th. We followed his remarkable road to recovery since the very beginning. A Phoenix doctor, one of the first in the nation to wind up in the hospital with a months-long battle against COVID-19. A year and a half later, he tells Team 12's Jess Winters he's back and better than ever. To prove it, he went hiking up one of the hardest trails in the valley today up Camelback Mountain with a team of doctors who saved his life. A potentially devastating story with accusations being leveled against Sun's owner Robert Sarver. Team 12's Cameron Cox joins us now with what we know. Cam hey guys, an incredible story of heroism after a stranger comes to the aid of Tina Coons saving her life. Their times are certainly tough and life without income for these people has amplified the problem, some going to extreme measures to make ends meet. Natalie Morales also speaks with Drew's brother, who's breaking his silence for the first time. Here's a preview of the Dateline NBC exclusive, Infamous. Welcome back. Today is Dia de los Muertos, the Mexican holiday where families reunite with their relatives who've passed on. Yeah, it's also a celebration of that reunion with food, drinks, and more. Hey, Rachel. Hey, good evening to you, Mark and Caribe. As you said, the anticipation is building here in downtown Phoenix as more of the stadiums are letting more and more fans in. So bars and restaurants getting excited, opening their doors ahead of those game times starting. And of course, people looking for any kind of garb, memorabilia. And ASU getting a stop on fourth and one. Thank you very much. Their big game against UCLA looking pretty good at this hour. Yeah, right now it's looking pretty good. ASU has taken a lead. 911 operators getting frantic calls from people roughly two weeks ago near a canal at 44th Street in Camelback when the suspect was allegedly attacking people, then runs from police. Hours and hours of video showcases every step officers took that night to ensure the safety of shoppers here at Westgate that night back in May when the lone shooter opened fire. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rachel Cole. And I'm Mitch Carr. Team 12's Josh Sanders spoke with experts about available resources for caregivers and the growing concern that more older Americans may be left without the support they need when they need it the most. So I know you do a bit of off-roading yourself. <laughs> Indy, Intel, your pepper. Um, not necessarily with a Tesla. No, <laughs> they do have their own little joggy mobile behind my bike. They have the full on goggles, helmets, and yes, it gets lit up for Christmas so as we wow, She's already won. I uh, mean, to the fact she's at this point, but 100%. What a grueling race. I cannot believe that. I mean, Yuma is only 156 miles from where we're sitting right now, and, and it's 240. <coughs> that puts it in perspective for My sure. My goodness. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. All right, let's send things over to Team 12's Jen Wall, who's in this morning for Miss Crystal. How are things shaping up for the weekend? With all the monsoons, trees have been left dying in front of houses across Arizona. Yeah, so what do you do with an eyesore in your yard? You carve it. One last thing for our Night Owls, Zoo Lights tickets are officially on sale now. After glowing strong for 30 years, Zoo Lights is expected to be open on November 24th. You know, we here at 12 News are partial to the peacock that's on display out there. You know why. Thanks so much for putting your trust in us. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Today in AZ. Welcome back. Yesterday, President Biden announced new mandates that would require tens of millions of Americans to get vaccinated. Today, Governor Ducey responded to the latest Biden mandates. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rachel Cole. And I'm Mitch Carr. Tonight, an Arizona native from Mesa is bringing the first Olympic medal back to State 48. Hey guys, after several years with the LA Clippers, Chris Paul is fitting in right at home with the Phoenix Suns, but his good deeds are still dominoing here in downtown LA. We all love to let these little guys lick our faces. Well, sometimes, but no one wants even puppy breath to linger too long. While the saying goes, pack your patience, a lot of these passengers packing a punch, creating unsafe situations for people trying to travel in peace. That list includes Tucson native and University of Arizona diver Delaney Schnell. Of course, Tokyo is 16 hours ahead of us, so her gold medal final is starting any minute now. So we're keeping our eyes on that. Delaney is competing in the women's synchronized 10 meter tonight. Hey guys, after several years with the LA Clippers, Chris Paul is fitting in right at home with the Phoenix Suns, but his good deeds are still dominoing here in downtown LA. He's a tremendous individual, both on and off the court. I think it's really critical and it's highly impactful. Um, 
you know, to to be able to have figures that um, that you can look up to. Generosity and general consideration for kids in the Metro Los Angeles area. We were so grateful to, to get the support of, of the Clippers and the Chris Paul Foundation. The Chris Paul Family Foundation and the LA Clippers renovating this Boys and Girls Club. CEO Patrick Mahoney. There was furniture. We also got a golf zone, um, golf simulator, which was really um, a great thing for kids to be able to have access to. Paul providing partial support for programs like literacy, arts, and of course, athletics. Athletes are, are sort of seen, especially to our young kids, as these superhuman beings. And when they are able to provide, um, you know, stories around their journeys and around the importance of learning what they learn at a Boys and Girls Club, uh, it also makes, you know, sort of the future seem a little bit more, um, uh, you know, wide open. The renovation's taking place five years ago, but leaving a lasting impact. Somebody um, that, that actually, um, you know, takes the time or gives the visibility into, you know, what their journey looks like. Um, and how they got to where they are. The following year in 2016, Paul receiving ESPN's second annual Sports Humanitarian of the Year Award. We're truly grateful for that and I'm sure that you know they'll continue to, to support Boys and Girls Clubs in the future. And now, of course, the Phoenix Suns lucky to have a leader like Chris Paul on the court, and we know he brings that same care and consideration to the Valley of the Sun. In Los Angeles, Rachel Cole, 12 News. We all love to let these little guys lick our faces. Well, sometimes, but no one wants even puppy breath to linger too long. Dutch the yellow lab slamming the door on old treats, whereas Jada has tried chewing something else. She has tried to eat her way through her kennel. Good news though, when it comes to doggy dental care. Our product will be incorporated into existing manufacturers' pet chews and treats. That's researcher Scott Zentak. He's the CEO of UPetcha. He, along with Dr. Eric Lyons from the University of Arizona, came up with the idea for healthy treats packed with an added benefit. A bunch of us were sitting around after dinner with a bunch of dogs in our laps. And invariably, since we just eaten Thanksgiving dinner, our dogs were very happy to be licking our faces. But at the end of the night, you know, things that we all thought about was dogs have bad breath. Now, after months of research, they found harmless, naturally occurring bacteria that they can modify, leaving our dogs' mouths with a minty fresh smell for a couple of hours. It's different from other toothpaste and treats that simply cover up the odor. We wanted ones that were safe. Um, they had no ability to cause disease. And so we found a handful of these. Uh, from that, we developed a very small genetic program to produce mint smell, which is a particular molecule called methyl salicylate. The next step, finding a way to make it last for eight to 12 hours. Local veterinarian, Dr. Karen Sullivan with the Arizona Animal Welfare League says it could be a game changer. This new tree could really help people um, just add another level of home care, which can help uh, prevent or space out the amount of care they need from their veterinarian. I also give her a daily chew that has a plaque remover on it. Dog owners praising you, Petcha, and anxious to try out the pet products. Work with partners to incorporate our product into theirs to make a premium product that, when fed to dogs, allows their pets and their families to have fresh breath for hours on end. I wouldn't be adverse to trying something else. To there's no specific timeline on when this minty method will hit the market, so safe to say we'll keep kissing our furry friends in the meantime. High five. <laughs> Rachel Cole, 12 News. Good boy, Dutch. While the saying goes, pack your patience, a lot of these passengers packing a punch, creating unsafe situations for people trying to travel in peace. I remember going to Las Vegas in a very belligerent man. I mean, he literally fought the, the airline stewardess, and, and they, they took him off with force. Everyday travelers sharing snippets of shocking behavior at 30,000 feet. Behavior like this video caught on board an Allegiant flight taking off from Mesa last October over a face mask. And prior to that, in August, a passenger refused to comply with American Airlines mandatory face covering policy while in the air from LA to Phoenix. Authorities arrested the 47 year old. The airline banned her. Communication and behavior expert Eric Bailey says short tempers and mask mandates don't mix, and now there's more ambiguity. States, municipalities, counties are starting to lift mandates on masks and, and, and where people can go in and out of, and that isn't the case uh, on airplanes. In a typical year, the Federal Aviation Administration sees anywhere from 100 to 150 cases of bad behavior, but... 
The FAA says there have been more than 1,300 unruly passenger reports since February. The agency is now taking a zero tolerance approach and cracking down on violators. I signed an order directing FAA safety inspectors and attorneys to pursue legal enforcement action against any passenger who assaults, threatens, intimidates, or interferes with airline crew members. The FAA's zero tolerance policy could end up costing people behaving badly big time. We're talking fines up to $35,000, criminal charges, as well as possible bans for life for certain airlines. We're at Sky Harbor. Rachel Cole, 12 News. Kona athletes are going for gold and how they're doing. Hey, Rachel. Yes, good evening to you guys. That list includes Tucson native and University of Arizona diver Delaney Schnell. Of course, Tokyo is 16 hours ahead of us, so her gold medal final is starting any minute now, so we're keeping our eyes on that. Delaney is competing in the women's synchronized 10 meter tonight. She's been focused on platform diving since winning a bronze medal in the 2019 World Championships. Delaney now hopes to become the first American female diver to win gold at the Olympics since her favorite Olympian. Laura Wilkinson was one of my favorites because she is the gold medalist in my event and I would like to be able to earn a gold medal. It's been my biggest goal, my biggest dream. And so, you know, that's why it's, it feel, I feel like that's part of why it hasn't sunk in fully because it's, you know, it's such a big deal to me. While gold medals are her main focus, she's had fun at the forefront too, knowing that it's not just a job, but it's also a dream come true. Sadly, Allison Schmidt's dream of an individual medal at the Tokyo Olympics is coming to an end. The Valley swimmer who trains with ASU's Bob Bowman coming in 10th place in the 200 meter free semifinal. However, Allison will compete in another relay so she could pick up her second medal of the games and 10th overall. She's already won a bronze in Tokyo as a prelim swimmer in the 4x100 freestyle relay. And, and of course, Jagger growing up in a gymnastics family in Mesa, but now growing a reputation for something totally different. He's the first Team USA member to medal in men's skateboarding. Jagger bringing home the bronze in the brand new event in the Today Show, catching up with him and surprising him on live TV with his dad, Jeff, and baby brother, giving him props from the golf course. Sonia, you were a true champion on that, on that uh skate park the other day it was unbelievable i knew when i when i saw him put his ear pods in and i remember the playlist i made for him of kenny rogers barry manilow and run dmc that it was all going to come together at the right moment it's, it's, yeah it's no joke <laughs> amazing it's crazy his playlist during competition did in fact include a mix of new rap and old country. He added that he's planning to give that beautiful bronze medal to his mom when he gets home to AZ later on this week. Guys, we'll send things back to you.